Hey guys, welcome to Budget EDH. I'm your host, Mike. On this week's episode, we bring you Volrath the Shape Stealer at a $100 budget out of Commander 2019. Volrath is two, a black, a green, and a blue for a legendary creature shapeshifter. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a minus one, minus one counter on up to one target creature. You can pay one, and until your next turn, Volrath the Shape Stealer becomes a copy of target creature with a counter on it, except it's a 7 5, and it has this ability. In this deck, we want a lot of ways of putting counters onto our creatures and also our opponent's creatures as well. Volrath also works really well with Infect. There are a few creatures in this deck that have infect and if you can put a counter on them which we have a lot of ways of doing in this deck you can turn your volrath into an infect creature and then volrath is a 7-5 infect creature which threatens to kill one of your opponents very quickly in addition proliferate works really well in this deck not only because you can add additional counters onto all of your creatures you can also add additional counters onto your opponents that have that infect damage as well or the negative one negative one counters that that Volrath gives to your opponent's creatures. In addition, we want other ways that we can clone our opponent's creatures, not just with Volrath, but with other abilities as well. And there's quite a few clones that we put in this deck. We do want to be able to copy our opponent's best creatures in their deck, and that's kind of the strategy that we're going for in this deck, is to copy their best creatures and to win with that infect damage or with getting in with big creatures that have a bunch of counters on them. Let's start with this deck tech by talking about some of the ramp that we have in this deck. Now, we do want to ramp early so that we can get out our Volrath as quickly as possible so that we can start copying our opponent's creatures and start putting those minus one, minus one counters on them. So first up, we have Llanowar Elves and Elvish Mystic. They're both a green and then they can tap to add a green to your mana pool. And then Elves of the Deep Shadow is a green mana and you can tap it to add a black to your mana pool and it deals one damage to you. These are all really great in this deck. They come down on the first turn if you have them in your hand and are going to ramp you out real quick. Next up, we have Arbor Elf. It's a green mana for a creature that taps to untap target forest. So similar to the other ones, this is another great creature to get down on turn one and help you ramp. Then we have Devoted Druid. It's one and a green for a creature. You can tap to add a green to your mana pool, and then you can put a minus one, minus one counter on Devoted Druid to untap it. This has some synergies with Volrath. You can actually copy this creature if you put a minus one, minus one counter on it. Then your Volrath can tap for mana as well if you need to. Then we have Incubation Druid. It's one and a green for a creature. Tap to add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. If Incubation Druid has a plus one, plus one counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. And then it has three green, green to adapt three. If this creature has no plus one, plus one counters on it, put three plus one, plus one counters on it. And this creature is great in this deck. We have a lot of ways of adding counters to our creatures. You can tap this for three mana more often than not in this deck. And next up, we have some mana rocks. So first up, we have Soul Ring. It's one colorless for an artifact. You can tap to add two colorless to your mana pool. Then we have Fell War Stone. Two colorless for an artifact. Tap to add one mana of any color that a land in opponent controls could produce. And then we have Everflowing Chalice. It's zero for an artifact. Multi-Kicker two. You may pay an additional two any number of times as you cast a spell. And then it enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it for each time it was kicked. Tap to add a colorless for each charge counter on Everflowing Chalice. This is one of the better mana rocks in this deck because we do have a lot of ways of proliferating in this deck and adding additional counters onto this is relatively easy. This will typically tap for a lot of mana in this deck. Then we have all the signets. So we have Simic Signet, Golgari Signet, and Demir Signet. They all cost two colorless mana, and then you can pay one and tap it to add two different colors of mana to your mana pool. And then last but not least, we have another really great mana rock in this deck. It's Astral Cornucopia. It's XXX for an artifact. Astral Cornucopia enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. Tap it to choose a color. Add one mana of that color for each charge counter on Astral Cornucopia. Again, we do have a lot of ways of proliferating in this deck, and we'll be able to put a lot of counters on this. So I ended up tapping for a lot in this deck. Next up, let's talk about some of the interaction that we put into this deck. Now, there's not a ton of interaction in this deck, but we did want some ways to stop our opponents if they go to combo off or to deal with some problematic permanence that they may play. So first up, we'll talk about all the counter magic that we put into this deck. And first up, we have counter spell. It's blue blue for an instant counter target spell. And then we have negate. It's one in a blue for an instant to counter target non-creature spell. Arcane denial is one in a blue for an instant counter target spell. Its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. You draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. These are all really cheap, efficient ways of interacting with our opponent when they may play a spell that we need to counter 
Next up, we have a couple of ways that we're able to deal with permanents if they're already on the battlefield. And the first one is Reality Shift. It's one in a blue for an instant. Exile target creature. Its controller manifests the top card of their library. And then to manifest, you put the top card of your library onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature. If it's a creature card, it can be turned face up anytime for its mana cost. Then we have Putrefy. It's one, a black and a green for an instant. Destroy target artifact or creature. It can't be regenerated. And then we have Beast Within. It's two and a green for an instant. Destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a three, three green beast creature token. These are all really great ways of dealing with permanents that you may need to get rid of that your opponents play over the course of the game. And then next up we have Grim Affliction. It's Two and a black for an instant, you can put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, then proliferate. This is really great because it not only gives you a way of putting a counter on your opponent's creatures so that you can use your Volrath to copy it, also lets you proliferate as well. So you can put extra counters onto your permanents or your opponent's permanents as well. Say they have an infect counter on them, you can put a second infect counter on them, which is really great. Then we have Black Sun Zenith. It's X black black for a sorcery. Put X minus one, minus one counters on each creature, shuffle black sun zenith into its owner's library this is the best board wipe that you can have in this deck because it can put minus one minus one counters it doesn't just give minus one minus one until end of turn you can just play this for one black black put one minus one minus one counter on all creatures on the battlefield and then volrath is free to shape steal any of your opponent's creatures on the battlefield after playing this card. Next up, let's go over some of the card draw that we have in this deck. So first up, we have Tezzeret's Gambit. It's three and a Phyrexian Blue, and Phyrexian Blue can be paid with either a blue mana or two life. And it says, draw two cards, then proliferate. So this is great because it's not only gonna draw you those two cards, it's also gonna help you get additional counters onto either your creatures or your opponent's creatures, or help add to that infect count on your opponents. Then we have Fathom Mage. It's two, a green and a blue for a creature with Evolve. And Evolve says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. And whenever a plus one plus one counter is put on Fathom Mage, you may draw a card. So this is going to draw you a ton of cards because you do have a lot of ways of putting plus one plus one counters on our creatures. And this is also going to get bigger just because of the Evolve mechanic as well. Then we have Return of the Wild Speaker. It's four and a green for an instant. Choose one. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. And then non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. So if you play this card and you have Volrath on the battlefield, this is going to draw you seven cards if Volrath is the biggest creature, which more often than not it's going to be. For five mana, drawing seven cards is fantastic in this deck. Another thing to note here is if you're able to give Volrath Infect, if you play Return of the Wild Speaker as an instant, you can actually one-shot your opponents with Volrath, giving it that plus three, plus three with Return of the Wild Speaker. Just another flexible card that you can have in this deck that gives you a couple of options when you play it. Next up, we have a couple of cards that are gonna draw us cards when we cast creature spells or when they enter the battlefield. So first up, we have Guardian Project. It's three and a green for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. And then Beast Whisper is two green green for a creature. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. These are great in this deck. We have a ton of creatures, especially a bunch of mana dorks and different things that when we play them, it's going to also come with a card draw attached to it, which is great in our deck. And then last but not least, we have Gen generous patron. It's two and a green for a creature. When it enters the battlefield, support two. Put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. And whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, draw a card. This works great with Volrath. We have a lot of ways in our deck of putting minus one minus one counters on creatures. And Volrath also has that ability on him as well. Whenever we do that, we're going to draw a card, which is great value for our deck. Next up, let's talk about all the ways that we're able to add plus one plus one counters onto our creatures. And we also have a couple of ways of adding them onto our opponent's creatures as well. So first up, we have Rishkar Pima Renegade. It's two and a green for a legendary creature. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Each creature you control with a counter on it has tap to add a green to your mana pool. And then we have Jing Yangu Wildcrafter. It's a legendary planeswalker. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool and you can pay minus one put a plus one plus one counter on target creature 
Unspeakable symbol is one black black for an enchantment. You can pay three life, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. These are all really great ways of putting counters onto our creatures and they also let you put them onto any target creature. So you could potentially put those plus one plus one counters on your opponent's creatures as well so that you could use Vorath's ability to copy them. Next up we have Renata, Call to the Hunt. It's a legendary enchantment creature and its power is equal to your devotion to green. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. And then next up we have Master Biomancer. It's two, a green and a blue for a creature. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it, equal to Master Biomancer's power, and is a mutant in addition to its other types. And then Loyal Guardian is four and a green for a creature with trample. It has Lieutenant. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. These are all great ways of giving plus one plus one counters to all of your creatures so that you can use your Volrath to copy them. This is great to play before you play your infect creatures so you can guarantee that you'll be able to copy your infect creatures with Volrath so you can get in for that damage. And then last but not least, we do have Path of Discovery. It's three and a green for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it explores. And then to explore is to reveal the top card of your library, put that card into your hand if it's a land, and then if it's not, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature, then put the card back or put it into your graveyard. This is another great way of getting some plus one plus one counters onto your creatures. It also lets you smooth out your draws and get some additional lands into your hand and potentially draw some cards off of it as well. Next up, I wanna talk about a couple of utility cards that work well with plus one plus one counters. So first up, we have Herald of Secret Streams. It's three and a blue for a creature. Creatures you control with a plus one plus one counter on it can't be blocked. So this is great. We have a lot of ways of adding plus one plus one counters onto our creatures. And if we do, those creatures can't be blocked. This is a great card. It's going to help us get in for damage since we have so many ways of putting plus one plus one counters onto our creatures. This just assures that they can't be blocked and get in for that damage. Think about all the infect creatures that we have in this deck that now can be unblockable and close out the game even quicker. Champion the Lamb holds a similar card. It's one green green for a creature, creatures with power less than Champion of Lambholt's power can't block creatures you control. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Champion of Lambholt. So this is going to grow really big and then your opponents actually won't be able to block any of your creatures if their power is less than Champion of Lambholt's power. At a certain point in the game, this will just make your creatures unblockable. This is just like Herald of the Secret Streams, a great card in this deck. And then next up, we have another great card in this deck. It's Tetsamok Primal Death. It's four black black for a legendary creature with death touch. You can pay a black and reveal it from your hand to put a prey counter on target creature. Activate this ability only during your turn. And when it enters the battlefield, destroy each creature your opponents control with a prey counter on it. That is a really great ability, but the real reason we want this in our deck is to be able to put those prey counters on our opponents creatures so that we're able to copy them with Volrath. This is a very cheap way of putting counters onto our opponents creatures. Now Volrath doesn't say that they need to be plus one, plus one, or minus one, minus one counters. He just cares that it has a counter on them. So Tetsamok will work great with being able to copy our opponent's creatures with Volrath when we play it. Next up, we have a couple of cards that synergize with minus one, minus one counters or put minus one, minus one counters onto our opponent's creatures and that we're able to proliferate with all the cards that we have in our deck. So first up, we have Hepatra Vizier of Poisons. It's a black and a green for legendary creature. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Whenever you put one or more minus one, minus one counters on a creature, create a one, one green snake creature token with death touch. This is a really great commander deck in its own right and is really great in Volrath. It's going to give you additional ways of putting minus one, minus one counters on creatures and also gives you snakes every time you do it, which is really great. Next up, we have Nest of Scarabs. It's two and a black for an enchantment. Whenever you put one or more minus one, minus one counters on a creature, create that many one, one black insect creature tokens. Again, this is a great way of putting some tokens onto the battlefield whenever you put minus one, minus one counters. We're going to be doing that over the course of the game anyway, so might as well get some additional value off of it. Then we have Necro Skitter. It's one black, black for a creature that has Wither. This deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one counters. Whenever a creature an opponent controls with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, you may return that card to the battlefield under your control. This is a fantastic card. We'll be putting a ton of minus one minus one counters on our opponent's creatures and whenever they die we get to put it back onto the battlefield giving us a ton of additional value with this card. 
And then last but not least, we do have Carnifex Demon. It's four black black for a creature with flying. It enters the battlefield with two minus one minus one counters on it. You can pay a black and remove a minus one minus one counter from Carnifex Demon. Put a minus one minus one counter on each other creature. This is huge. It's just like Black Sun Zenith. It's going to let you put a counter on all of your opponent's things, plus yours as well. And then you can activate Volrath and make a copy of any creature on the battlefield after playing this card. Next up, let's talk about some of the infect creatures that we have in this deck. Now, the main strategy with these is that we do want to get a plus one plus one counter on them so that we can use our Volrath to turn into a copy of it because Volrath is a seven five. It's going to close out the game quicker with that versus some of these little creatures that have infect on them. So that is the main goal of this. So first up, we have Blighted Agent, which is probably the best infect creature in this deck. It's one in a blue for a creature with infect. This creature deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one minus one counters and to players in the form of poison counters and blighted agent is unblockable so if you get a plus one plus one counter on this and you are able to copy this with volrath your volrath is going to be a seven five unblockable creature that can get in and get those poison counters on your opponents and start to put some pressure on them very quickly then we have plague mirror it's two colorless for an artifact creature that has infect and you can tap to add one mana to your mana pool this is great because it gives you some ramp and also gives you another creature that you can copy with Volrath if you get a plus one plus one counter on it. Icarats is another great creature with Infect. It's one black black for a creature with Infect. And when it enters the battlefield, each player gets a poison counter. This is great because we have so many ways of proliferating in this deck that if we can get that first counter on our opponents, we'll be able to add additional counters every time we proliferate. Next up, we have Viridian Corruptor. It's one green green for a creature with infect. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact. This is great because not only does it give you another creature to copy with Volrath, but it also gives you a way of destroying some artifacts and gives you a little bit more interaction on a creature. Then we have Viral Drake. It's three and a blue for a creature with flying and infect, and you can pay three and a blue to proliferate. Again, this is a great creature to copy with Volrath as it does have some form of evasion and it also has infect, and it also has proliferate if you pay four mana you can proliferate and add additional counters onto your opponents and also your creatures and your opponent's creatures as well. Next up I want to talk about a couple of creatures that are great targets to shape steal with Volrath and they don't really fit into any of the other strategies in the deck but they're really great creatures to include. So first up we have Cold Eyed Selkie. It's one in a hybrid green blue and a hybrid green blue for a creature that has Island Walk. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player you may draw that many cards so if you're able to put a plus one plus one counter on this which again we do have a lot of ways of doing in this deck you can make your volrath into a copy of this card and then it would swing in and if it deals combat damage to that player you can draw seven cards which is just a fantastic rate and is a great card to include in this deck and then we have invisible stalker it's one in a blue for a creature with hexproof and unblockable again this is another great creature to make a copy of with volrath it's going to be a seven five unblockable hexproof. Good luck dealing with this when you're swinging into your opponents with a 7-5 unblockable hexproof. Next up, let's go over some of the clones that we have in this deck. Now, I wanted to make this a fun sub theme. Since Volrath can steal our opponent's creatures' abilities and effects, I did want some other ways to take advantage of that in this deck. So we did put some clones in the deck to take advantage of that. So first up, we have Spark Double. It's three and a blue for a creature. You may have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or a planeswalker you can Control, except it enters with a plus one plus one counter on it if it's a creature it enters with an additional loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker and it isn't legendary if that permanent is legendary this is a really cool way of getting a second volrath in your deck you can play this and get a second volrath which is going to give you additional ways of putting minus one minus one counters on it each turn and you can get into some pretty crazy loops with this card if you have two volraths in the battlefield copying different things then we have Stunt Double. It's three and a blue for a creature shapeshifter with flash. You may have Stunt Double enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. I love this card. It's great. You can play this at instant speed and copy anything. And if your opponents play a really powerful creature, you can punish them by getting a copy yourself. Clones are only as good as the creatures that your opponents put in the deck. They're very casual. They're not super competitive, but they are a lot of fun to play. And I love having them in this deck. 
Next up, we have Clever Impersonator. It's two blue blue for a creature. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. And that's very powerful. You can have this enter the battlefield as a soul ring, a mana crypt. It could enter as anything, which is really great. It gives you a lot of flexibility in the options you choose. You need ramp, you can make a soul ring. This is as good as any other permanent on the battlefield. And it is very situational with whatever your opponents put out. Then we have Altered Ego. It's X, two, green, blue for a creature, and it can't be countered. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it enters with X additional plus one plus one counters on it. This is great because not only can it copy your opponent's creatures, you can also put counters on it, which then Volrath can also turn itself into that creature as well. So this is your opponent's best creature, and then Volrath can also become a copy of it too, which is really great. Then last but not least, we do have Progenitor Mimic. It's four green and blue for a creature. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep if this creature isn't a token create a token that's a copy of this creature this is great it does cost a lot of mana but it's going to give you a copy of the best creature on the battlefield the time that you play it each turn if your opponents don't deal with it this can get out of control pretty quickly more often than not your opponents are going to try to take this out the second they see it but it is a great clone to include in your deck especially if you're playing a clone strategy which we are next up let's go over the cards that help us proliferate in this deck now proliferate is where you you can choose any number of permanents and or players and then give each another counter of each kind already there. So this works with creatures, it works with planeswalkers, it also works with infect counters if your opponents have them, which we have infect as a strategy in this deck. So this works really well with it of getting additional infect counters onto your opponents and also works well with all of our plus one plus one counter strategy that we have in this deck as well. So first up, we have Evolution Sage. It's two and a green for a creature. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. And then Flux Channeler is two and a blue for a creature. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. These are two of the best ways of proliferating in the stack. Whenever you play a land, you can add additional counters, or whenever you play a non-creature spell, which we do have quite a bit of in this stack, you can add a counter onto all of your stuff. Then Thrumming Bird is one in a blue for a creature that has flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can proliferate. Next up, we have Contagion Clasp. It's two colorless for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, and then you can pay four and tap it to proliferate. I really like this card because it gives you that first minus one, minus one counter that you can put onto any creature on the battlefield so that your Volrath can shape steal that creature. Then we have Inexorable Tide. It's three blue, blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell, proliferate. Now this does say any spell, so it's not just non-creature spells. It will let you proliferate even if you play creatures as well. And then next up we have Rolesque Apex Hybrid. It's two green, green, blue for a legendary creature with flying and trample. When it enters the battlefield, put two plus one, plus one counters on another target creature you control. And when it dies, you can proliferate, then proliferate again. This card's a powerhouse in this deck. It lets you proliferate twice, and it also gives you plus one, plus one counters to put on a creature you control, giving it something to proliferate when it leaves the battlefield. Now I want to have another way of winning the game if our combat damage strategy falls through or if we're not able to quite get those 10 poison counters on our opponents. And a great way of doing that is with a card called Simic Ascendancy. It's a green and a blue for an enchantment and you can pay one a green and a blue to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put onto a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. Now we have a lot of ways of putting counters onto creatures in our deck, not just with this card, but with a lot of different cards. So we're going to be able to get those 20 counters on Simic Ascendancy very quickly if our opponents don't deal with this in a timely manner. And this just gives us another avenue of winning the game. If our other ways of winning the game are stifled, we can play this and potentially win the game very quickly once we play it. And only costs two mana, so it's really easy to play as well. Next up, let's quickly go over the mana base that we include in this deck. So first up, we have Sunken Hollow. It's a land with the island swamp type on it, and you can tap it to add a blue or a black to your mana pool, and enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. This is great if you have fetch lands in your deck, you'll be able to search this land out, and it has a relatively low cost of entering the battlefield tapped. Then we have Tainted Isle and Tainted Wood. They both tap to add a colorless to your mana pool, and then you can tap them to add two different types of mana to your mana pool, but you can only activate it if you control a swamp. 
Then we have a couple of pain lands. We have Land War Waste and Yavimaya Coast. They both tap for a colorless mana, and then you can tap it and add one of each color to your mana pool, and it deals one damage to you. Exotic Orchard is one of my favorite budget lands, and it's tap it to add one mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. This is a budget staple. I've put this in pretty much every single deck that I've brewed that has two colors or more in it. It is only 99 cents and it will more often than not tap for whatever color of mana that you need. Since you have those three other players, it's going to be easy to tap for all of your colors. Next up, we have Opulent Palace. It enters the battlefield tapped, and you can tap to add Saltide to your mana pool. Command Tower is another great land. It's tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. This is just another staple. And then Land of War Reborn is a land that enters the battlefield tapped, and you can tap to add a green to your mana pool, and then it has Graft 1, which works really great in this deck. We do want to be able to put counters on our creatures. So Graft says, this land enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may, you may move a plus one, plus one counter from this land onto it. This land is great in this deck because we do want to be able to put counters on our creatures so that we can potentially copy them with Volrath. And we have a lot of synergies with plus one, plus one counters in our deck. Being able to put a plus one, plus one counter on our creature whenever it enters the battlefield off of this land is really great. Then we have a couple of budget fetch lands. We have Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds. You can tap and sack them, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. These are really great if you're playing three colors or more. They do enter the battlefield tapped, but that's not really a huge downside in this deck if you just have a couple of them. Then we have Orin Reef, the Vastwood. It enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it to add a green to your mana pool, or you can tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn. Again, this is really great in this deck. We do want ways of putting plus one, plus one counters on our creatures. And having this be on a land has a very high upside in the deck. It doesn't cost you anything extra really to put this card in your deck, except it does enter the battlefield tapped. But you do get a lot of use out of this land in your deck. You can put a lot of plus one, plus one counters in your creature having this out on the battlefield. Next up, we have Novagen Heart of Progress. It's a land you can tap to add one to your mana pool, or you can pay a blue and a green, tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature that entered the battlefield this turn. This is exactly like Orin Reef the Vastwood, except it costs you a little bit more mana to pay for it. Karn's Bastion is another great land, and it's a staple in this deck. You can tap to add a colorless to your mana pool, or you can pay four and tap it to proliferate. And then to proliferate is to choose any number of permanents and or players, then give each another counter of each kind already there. Rogue's Passage is another great land in this deck. You can tap it to add a colorless to your mana pool, and you can pay four and tap it. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. This is a great land when you want to get in for that infect damage with Volrath. You can turn your Volrath into an infect creature and then give it unblockable with Rogue's Passage, and then get in there and infect your opponents. And then last but not least, we have eight forests, six islands, and six swamps in this deck. We're leaning heavily on force in this deck as we do have a lot of one mana creatures that help us ramp early in the game. Thank you so much for watching this budget deck tech today. If you have any suggestions for some of the picks in this deck or agree with or disagree with some of the choices, let us know in the comments down below. If you like this video, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And check us out on Patreon over at patreon.com slash budgetedh. There's a lot of different tiers for rewards over on Patreon. See you guys next time. Thank you.